Today I want to show you a little trick that will allow you to widen your audio image not only in the stereo direction but also in the vertical direction and in the depth direction. And we're going to use a plugin that was actually never meant to be used that way but just happened to have these capabilities. Now what I'm going to do today is primarily meant for a spatial audio production but you can also apply that in order to get a better three-dimensional image in your stereo production. So whether you're working on spatial audio or stereo, this one should be interesting. So let's get started. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I'm a digital media educator with more than 30 years of experience in higher education. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And today about a plugin that was never meant to be used the way I'm going to use it. If any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. And that link is in the description below or there's also a QR code here somewhere. The plugin that I'm going to use today comes from a company called Tone Boosters. Now, if you've never heard of Tone Boosters before, I would recommend checking them out. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. They are known for producing very well-made plugins at an extremely reasonable price. And one of the things that's really nice about those plugins is that most of them are capable of handling immersive audio up to 16 channels. Now, in most cases, this is done uh, in a very straightforward way where the effect is applied to each channel in the very same way. However, there's one notable exception, and that is Equalizer 4. And this is the plugin that we're going to use today in order to play around with our three-dimensional sound a little. And with that being said, let's get started. Now, I'm going to work with Cubase today, uh, but what I'm going to show you works in any uh, digital audio workstation that is capable of handling Ambisonics audio. It doesn't have to be Cubase. It also doesn't have to be Windows. I'm working on Windows today. So whatever you have is fine as long, once again, it can handle Ambisonics audio. So let's have a brief listen on what I have here. And this is really just a very, very simple MIDI loop that drives an instance of the synth tune. And I'm using one of those one finger presets. I was a little lazy today. So let's have a listen on what we have here. So as you can hear, it all kind of sounds very uh, spatial and uh, that is essentially by design. Because what I did here is I took the uh, stereo that comes out of Dune and I actually upscaled that to 7.1.2. Now, why would you do that? Well, there are a couple of reasons why you want to do that. Maybe you are kind of using that as a bed in a Dolby Atmos production, which essentially would require you to kind of go 7.1.2. Or you're working in surround sound um, and you just happen to have work with 7.1.2 or maybe you're working in uh, stereo and you're just using a higher channel count in order to kind of work on your three-dimensional image in order to then kind of fold it back into stereo this, those are all valid applications in my particular case i'm primarily doing that in order to demonstrate uh, the three-dimensional imaging that we're going to do later on so I'm essentially taking that stereo track that holds the instance of Dune and I'm routing that into a 7.1.2 group track. I'm not doing any panning on the stereo track itself, but what I have is that on this group track sits an instance of Halo Upscale. And that is essentially uh, turning the image, the two-dimensional image into a three-dimensional image. Let's just play that again so that we see what's happening with the Upmix plugin here. And what I've essentially done is, is I've, I've widened the image somewhat. Okay, let's bring that down maybe a little, even more. And I've also kind of increased the, uh, the height information a little so that we have something that's going on around us. Now, Hello Upscale is a really nice plugin. However, it's also really, really expensive. Um, now, I'm going to use that here primarily because it allows me to showcase the functionality that I want to show. If you are working with higher channel counts, you don't really need that plugin. You can actually work with other plugins as well. And you can also work with the tools that uh, Cubase provides you. But once again, here is I'm just using it for demonstration purposes. Now, if I want to manipulate individual channels in my 7.1.2 layout, I can do that with the Tone Booster CQ. Uh, in order to see how that works, let's just add an instance of the Tone Booster CQ. So I'm going to kind of close that here and let's just open up my channel settings and let's just add an instance of the Tone Booster's Equalizer to our 7.1.2 track and let's maybe kind of make that a little larger. Now, the interesting thing about the Tone Booster CQ is that if I click on an individual filter, I now get this one button here that says linked. And if I click on that linked button, I get all the individual channels. And what that essentially means is that I can now select which channels this uh, 
filter should act on. So if I want to, for example, have a filter that only acts on the two head channels, I can do that by simply deselecting everything but the two head channels, which are the channels uh, 9 and 10. Uh, so this would now give me a filter that only applies to the individual head channels and leaves everything else alone. Now we are not going to do that in a 7.1.2 layout. What we're going to do instead is we're going to apply the very same trick to an ambisonic signal. And this follows an idea that I laid out in a previous video uh, where I kind of showed you how to use an ambisonic signal in order to do some advanced uh, mid-side processing. Now, if you have not seen that video where I explain exactly how that works, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. In this video, I'm just going to give you the very basics. And the basic idea really is that an ambisonic signal is in some way an extension of a mid-side signal. That's essentially what it is. The first channel is the mono channel, which is equivalent to the mid channel. The second channel is the uh, is equivalent to the side channel in a mid-side signal. And the next two channels are the side channels for the other two dimensions. So one vertical di direction and one depth direction. And then you have higher order side channels. But let's just see how that essentially applies to what we're doing here. Now, the first thing that I needed to do is, and uh, let me first kind of close that again. And then let's maybe get rid of that instance of the equalizer here because we don't really want that. What I would like to do is I would like to uh, do some manipulation in the ambisonic signal. So for that, what I need to do is I need to first add an ambisonics track. So let's just add a group track here. That is a third order ambisonics track. And let's just give that a name and let's call that spatial mid-side because that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to work in a spatial mid-side processing. So let's add that track. And uh, then I'm going to route the uh, original 7.1.2 into my ambisonics track. And I'm not going to do anything with the panning of the original 7.1.2 track. I could kind of move that around. I'm not going to do that. I already have enough uh, spatial information in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out the decoder and I'm going to switch that out with the uh, Audio Brewers decoder. I've used that in previous videos. Once again, link in the description below. I kind of like that particular decoder simply because it gives a lot of visual information. So we kind of are going to see exactly what is going on here. Now, uh, if I'm adding that decoder, there's one thing that I need to do. Um, I need to actually kind of tell it exactly that I'm on a third order ambisonics track. For some reason, the auto button doesn't really work here. So it doesn't really automatically detect that this is the third order ambisonics track. So I need to actually kind of give it that information. So let's kind of switch it over to third order ambisonics. And let's just have a brief listen on how our audio sounds in ambisonics. <laughs> So the idea essentially is that I now have, uh, I see exactly the individual uh, information coming in at the channels of the ambisonic signal and I also see the spatial distribution of all the sound that is coming in. So that, that's sort of one of the main reasons why I like that particular decoder. So let's do some advanced spatial mid-side processing and all I really need to do is I need to drop an instance of the Tone Booster CQ on my ambisonics track. So let's do that. So let's open up the channel settings here and let's add an instance of Tone Boosters. And uh, here we are. Um, let's uh, close that and let's maybe once again make that a little larger. And let's move that over here a little so that we have a better view of what exactly is happening. Now the basic idea now is that uh, the individual channels now represent the first, second, third order information in the ambisonic signal. And uh, as I said before, the first channel really is the mono channel. And the next three channels, which are the first order ambisonic channels, are the side channels. Now the first thing that you do when you're working with mid-side information is that you're usually taking the low end out of the side channel and that's something that we can do here as well. The only difference is that we not only have one side channel, we actually have multiple of them. Uh, so uh, let's go into our EQ here and let's click on the uh, first one and let's change that into a high pass filter, high pass 6. And uh, let's just kind of apply that to everything but the mono channel or everything but the mid channel so let's deselect the uh, the first one and that will essentially apply that that filter to all the information that is coming in on all the other side channels those would be the first three which are the first order side channels and then we have five that are the second order side channels and then another series seven that are sort of the third order side channels so let's just have a listen on how that or kind of how that sounds <laughs> Now maybe I want to increase the spatial nature and I want to kind of make things a little broader and kind of expand a little. What I would have to do is I would have to uh, add some gain to the side channels. 
And uh, unfortunately, the Tone Booster CQ doesn't really kind of allow me to change the gain of, of individual channels. But what I can do is if I have a high pass or low pass filter, I can simply kind of increase the gain of that filter. So, so if I'm kind of increasing here, I'm now adding side information. And I'm once again, not only adding side information in the horizontal way, so not only stereo side information, I'm also adding side information vertically and in the, in the depth direction. Maybe a little much, so let's do it like that. Now the next thing that I can do is maybe I want to increase a little bit of the low end in the in the mid information. So let's do that. So let's do have a I don't know. Let's maybe have a low shelf, and let's only apply that to the mid information here. So I'm deselecting all the side channels. And let's just kind of do that. Something like this, maybe. Now, if I want to influence how certain frequencies are kind of uh, imaged in the three-dimensional field, I can also do that. So let's, for example, say that I want to increase the spatial nature of uh, some of the higher frequencies here. So let's take that filter here. And let's maybe only apply that to the first order ambisonics channel. So I'm going to deselect the mid channel and I'm going to deselect all the higher order information. So that essentially applies that only to the side channel in the stereo direction, that is the, the second channel here, the side channel in the vertical direction, that is the third one here, and the side channel in the uh, depth direction, that is the fourth channel here. So let's kind of move that up maybe. it a little brighter and that essentially will kind of push the higher frequencies more to the side. And I can also kind of experiment with the higher order side channel. So let's do maybe one thing. Let's maybe kind of see if we if the uh, if we reduce the third order side channels if that actually makes a difference because currently there's a lot of things going on. So maybe we can kind of kind of clean it up a little. So let's let's take the next one here. Let's turn that into maybe a low pass filter that will essentially allow us to uh, kind of reduce the gain of our channels. And let's only do that on the third order ambisonics channel. So those would be the channels 10 to 16. So let's deselect everything else. That essentially is only going to apply to the third order ambisonics channel. So when, we, when I'm manipulating that, you will actually see that here. So let's kind of maybe first, first kind of move that up in order to see what's actually happening. So I essentially see that, that these channels are affected and I can already hear that that's sort of kind of getting a lot of the, that kind of is bringing a lot of this kind of uh, confusing information, let's call it that way. So let's maybe kind of reduce that a little to make the signal a little cleaner. And that sounds pretty nice. Now, if I want to increase, for example, the hate information, I can also do that. So let's add another. And let's maybe only apply that to the hate information, to the side channel, the vertical side channel. This is uh, channel number three. So let's deselect everything else. Now, you're not going to hear a lot of difference, but you might actually see some difference here in the image, um, the way sort of the uh, ambisonic signal is imaged. So let me, let me kind of increased it a little. So if I'm increasing that significantly, you actually see that there's a lot more information not going on underneath. That is because I've sort of stretched the vertical direction. But once again, if I fold it down into stereo, this is actually not going to have that particular effect, but not, not kind of a strong effect really. Now what we've done here is a little bit unexpected because what we have achieved now is we have turned the Tone Boosters EQ into a tool that allows us to shape the three-dimensional imaging of our spatial sound. Now there are just a couple of things I would like to add and the first thing is that the Tone Boosters EQ has a possibility to add dynamic EQ. 
I would be aware that if you're working with a dynamic EQ in an ambisonics track or on an ambisonics track, then it might not work in exactly the way you expect it to, because once again, you're not in a channel-based layout, you're actually in an ambisonics layout, and the ambisonics signal is sort of driving the dynamic EQ. So it might not do exactly what you want it to do. And the same thing is true for the auto gain. So it does have a possibility to do auto gain, but once again, that auto gain now reacts to the ambisonic signal and not the original a 7.1.2 uh, channel-based signal and might therefore not do exactly what it expected to do. So this is really everything I wanted to say today. Now the video today was a result of a discussion on my Discord server. I sort of complained that there are no plugins out there that allow us to manipulate individual channels on an ambisonics track and then one of my members pointed out that Tone Boosters can do that and here we go. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join our Discord community. In that link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.